Hello, today I've got this vehicle for you, the Gale Cab Cora pickup vehicle on a VW Amarok double cab base. Manufactured in Germany, 4x4, it has been one of the most popular vehicles shown on this YouTube channel. Here I'm going to give it a second look and let's consider some of the pros and cons. I think I'll also take this opportunity to address one or two of the comments that were made about it. So the biggest negative point of course as with everything is the price. The starting price is almost 131,000 euros so if that's too much I will save your time and you can stop watching right now and if you're still watching I'm going to have to warn you that's the base price and if you want extras they're going to start costing. They're going to start costing quite a lot. So um, you've been warned. As far as the justification for the price is concerned then you're going to have to just keep watching. I'm going to show you the van and uh, I'm talking at the same time so uh, you just watch if you don't want to listen to me. The vehicle is only 597 centimeters long, 206 centimeters wide. Similar to that of a camper van based on a Fiat Ducato or Mercedes Sprinter. Note the word similar, not the same. It's a bit wider, but not a lot. I think it may often seem as though a pickup trailer can offer much more space. Maybe not much more space, but a bit more space than a camper van. However, of course, this is a different space concept. Inside, it seems as though you've got a bigger table and seat in the area than most camper vans. And in this case, there's a much bigger shower, although it's somewhat more complicated to open. Of course, this is an optical illusion. This is the way it appears to me and uh, you might think things differently. This vehicle is 293 centimeters high. If you're using the AT off-road tires, 265 by 70 R17. The body is made from carbon fiber monocoque shell, which makes it very light yet strong. The technology used comes from the aircraft industry and it's the sort of thing that one sees with boats as well. It has two centimeters of insulation. All of the tanks are located within the 20 centimeter double floor, but it needs to be pointed out that one would probably need the additional winter or Arctic package for cold or extremely cold weather use. Now remember what I said about the price earlier, you've got to add stuff on. And that's one of the things you're going to have to add on. Possibly if you're going to go up the Arctic. Um, if you don't, then you won't need it. Uh, but other things you probably will need to add on include things like uh, solar panels, more batteries. But anyway, we'll get on to that. Obviously, the weight, like the price, depends on the equipment which is installed. But we are probably looking at an empty weight of around 2,650 kilos, approximately. Uh, that of course includes the base vehicle. Of course, bear in mind that if this is to be used for hardcore off-roading and going to places off the beaten track, then you'll probably want to improve your self-sufficiency and increase things like battery capacity, as I mentioned, water storage and the like. And this will start to make the vehicle much heavier. And I think this is a really important point when we're considering 4x4. But let's go into what may seem like another negative thing about off-roading. Let's face it, this vehicle looks nice. Well, at least I think it looks nice. I think it looks horrible. But it looks so nice, you probably wouldn't want to take it anywhere where it's likely to get scratched. I mean, you certainly wouldn't take, take this down a dirt road, no one risk a, uh, a loose stone coming up and uh, hitting it. However, 4x4 campers are not designed to sit in showrooms. They're designed probably for hard use. The manufacturers say that it will require a very severe impact to puncture the outer skin. For example, hammer blows will not uh, damage but, uh, sorry, will damage it, but they won't pierce it. 
Uh, so I mean, if you're sort of driving and you bang, you hit something. Well, uh, on the side, I'm sure show you that happens quite a lot when you're in a 4x4. Well, I remember it happening when I was in the army in a Land Rover. Light damage can be repaired using carbon or glass fibre mat and epoxy resin. That's the sort of thing you see people doing with boats as well uh, in in harbours. So it's very similar technology anyway. The shape of the vehicle and the high centre of gravity does not permit an air conditioning unit to be placed on it. However, one could be placed elsewhere in the vehicle. Bear in mind, as always, that aircon is going to drain the battery very quickly. And it's only going to be effective if on mains hookup. And if you're on mains hookup, why do you need a vehicle like this anyway? Instead of getting aircon, why not get some fans? You will not notice how much uh, electricity they're taking. It's really next to nothing. Okay, fans can make a little bit of noise, I suppose, but then again, I suppose aircon does as well. This is a gas-free vehicle. There's an induction hob and a two-way fridge. It comes with 200 watts of solar panels and 160 ampere hours lithium ferrous phosphate battery. If necessary, up to 870 watts extra of solar can be installed. However, you did that, you probably want to increase your batteries too. And of course, that all costs money. Um, although they've got these batteries that go into them which are a convenient sort of shape which sort of fit quite nicely. Well of course that's what you're paying for. Heating is via diesel. Getting rid of the bas gas bottle of course does save you space particularly as all, there's already a fuel tank with diesel inside. But as far as cooking is concerned boiling water to make tea or coffee via a kettle possibly takes a bit less electricity than you might imagine. Although, um, a couple of points, obviously measure the water out before you do it, uh, that's really important if you're using uh, or in a van. And the second point is this, this is just my opinion, but I think a lower voltage kettle actually tends to uh, work better. So you might have to wait a few seconds longer, but um, I think it's better. Anyway, that's just the way it sort of appears to me. But on the negative side is this, if you're going to be using uh, electricity for cooking then as I've always said the batteries uh, the power is not going to really last ve uh, very long and um, for example I like beans I eat lots and lots of beans and beans take a lot of cooking uh, and um, it's quite honest I can't really see me cooking many beans on this I can't see this lasting more than two or three days uh, and so it depends how you, particularly if you're eating three times a day, I mean I eat once a day, but uh, if eating three times a day, then really it's not going to last very long. Now the sun's going to recharge the batteries, but I can't see this working very well in arctic conditions when the days are short, the angle of the sun is low, if it's out at all. And the same would apply if you're thinking of taking the vehicle to Newcastle. In fact the sun doesn't come out there at all, even in summer. So, on the subject of self-sufficiency, there's 130 litres of water uh, which can be held in the tank. Uh, if you're taking it seriously off-road, again, you might want to increase that. But one thing I would say is this, uh, people I know that are these hardcore off-roaders, they tend to wash in uh, lakes and rivers and, and the likes. Um, so that you do have uh, that and maybe then the crocodiles uh, can eat you. So one's going to sleep in the alcove, there's 90 centimeters space in there, much less than you would find in a camper van and that doesn't include the mattress so there's going to be even less or your bedding although you're probably under the bedding anyway. I appreciate that some people might find this claustrophobic and certainly air circulation particularly when it's hot might be a problem. There are two windows in the roof which you may need to open in the summer. Those that don't want to get soaking wet while stopping in a tropical storm could opt for a passageway between the cab and the habitation area. 
this door would be 80 centimeters high and 40 centimeters wide and that may also be suitable to allow a dog to sleep on the, at the rear seat of the cab. It's a dog uh, who's happy to sleep by, by him, him or herself there. The toilet is a macerator type which does not require any chemicals. It's a ceramic bowl with a water flush. After use, everything's chopped up into small pieces by a chopper pump and pumped into the 100 litre black water tank. I think this would last quite some time, particularly if urine were disposed of elsewhere. It's ele emptied electrically, so one does not have to pull a handle. And let's face it, if you're on an expedition in the middle of nowhere, the very last thing you're going to want is getting your hands dirty pulling a handle. The bathroom is very original, it's best seen in a video. Inside it measures 90 by 110 centimeters and the wash basin falls out of the toilet. But hey, let's uh, rather than explain it, just watch how it works. A bike rack supporting up to 50 kilos could be placed on the outside of the vehicle. You might feel that you need more storage. The vehicle will pull a trailer of up to 2,700 kilos. On the subject of storage, one comment in an earlier video was that there was not much of it in this vehicle. Well, let's face it, this vehicle measures about 12 square meters and a large part of that is taken up with the, uh, the engine and the, uh, uh, the the seating up front. To be quite honest, there's not much space in it. However, uh, there are storage hatches in the double floor, there's drawers inside, and in my opinion, storage for a vehicle of this type is very good. So um, I'll, I don't see that as a problem. So that gives you a little bit of information on the subject of this vehicle with some of my opinions. Trying to be realistic, I need to point out that I have not driven it uh, were I to do so, then my opinions could change. I also need to point out that I am not a 4 by 4 -er. I would be uh, if I had the first the cash to actually do it and uh, of course the courage to do it. I'm not even certain I've got that to be quite honest. But uh, I can imagine how much fun it would be, uh, uh, particularly if you're quite handy at fixing things, which unfortunately I'm not much good at that at all. But for getting out into the open, ah, fantastic. Anyway, thanks very much for watching and all the best from inside my van where I am right now.